Muscle tissue comes in three different varieties. We're gonna start with skeletal muscle tissue. This is the type of muscle tissue that allows us to move our skeletons. So it is voluntary. We get to choose whether to contract this type of muscle or not. Most skeletal muscles are connected to bones. Again, it allows you to move your skeleton, um, but there are a few special ones that are not connected to bones. A great example of that is your tongue. And your tongue is a muscle, but it doesn't connect to any bones. It's still very important. Okay, one special thing about skeletal muscle tissue is that we can control sort of how strong the contraction is. You can use your, your hand, your arm to pick up something very lightweight, or you can pick up something pretty heavy. Um, you have control over how strong the contraction is. Graded responses are possible. We can recruit um, more muscle fibers if we need to, or not so many if we're trying to pick up something very lightweight. So um, another thing about skeletal muscle tissue is that when we look at it with a microscope, it has a very characteristic appearance. It is striated. That means it has all these little lines that you can see running vertically in this picture. Those are called striations. And the other thing, if you look at this picture, the other thing you'll start to see is it seems like things are laid out sort of horizontally. It seems like um, we've got sort of a long section right here. And that is indeed called one muscle fiber. The way that this is formed in the embryonic stage is that a bunch of cells fuse together. And so we end up with one muscle fiber having multiple nuclei. So that's something that's kind of kind of interesting about muscle tissue. Usually we think about um, one cell having one nucleus, but in the case of muscle tissue, we end up with a really long cell that has multiple nuclei due to the way that it was formed in the embryonic stage. So again, the name for a muscle cell is um, myofiber is the technical name. A lot of times we just refer to them as muscle fibers. Um, but the reason we call them this is because of, look, just look at how long um, the structure is. It's like a fiber. It's so elongated and drawn out. So that's skeletal muscle tissue. Let's move on to the next muscle type, which will be cardiac muscle tissue. Cardiac muscle tissue is only found in the heart. That's why it's named the way that it is. And it's the type of muscle that we do not have voluntary control over. It beats automatically. And because of that, um, we don't have control over how strong the contraction is either. It's not capable of producing a graded contraction. Instead, it's an all or nothing event. Either the heart is in the process of contracting or it's in the process of relaxing and we'll learn more about why that's the case um, later on when we talk about the heart. Cardiac muscle is also striated. I'll show you a picture of it here. It's also striated, but it's got a few differences compared to the skeletal muscle that we just looked at. Um, one of the differences is all of these dark bands. These are called intercalated discs. These are separations between adjacent um, cardiac muscle cells. And what those do is they help to allow ion flow from one cell to the next. Again, we'll come back to this when we actually learn about the heart. Just kind of intro, inter, introducing um, some key points right now. So intercalated discs, that's something special cardiac muscle has, skeletal muscle does not have it. Our third type of muscle tissue is smooth muscle tissue. It's called smooth muscle tissue because it looks smooth. There are no striations, uh, none of those banding patterns tend to show up when we look with a microscope, so it looks smooth. And then um, where is this located at? Smooth muscle tissue is found in a lot of different places throughout the body. It tends to be in the walls of a lot of organs that require movement. So for example, um, the organs involved in digestion, like the stomach, small intestine, they have to have a way to, to contract in order to move the food along um, down the track. So the way that that's accomplished is by smooth muscle. There's sort of like a wrapping of smooth muscle around those organs. And the type of motion that the smooth muscle allows is called peristalsis. This is referring to a coordinated type of contraction. It happens sort of in a wave pattern. And this helps to just sort of push, like think of food, it helps to push the food along down the digestive tract. So that's peristalsis that can happen. 
The structure um, it is interesting and it fits with what the function is for the smooth muscle. The structure tends to be very layered and the layers alternate which way they're pointing. They run in different directions. So this allows squeezing um, it from many different directions so that the food doesn't get stuck in any one spot. Smooth muscle tissue is involuntary. We don't have conscious control over it. Uh, it's usually activated in coordination with the nervous system. So we'll be getting back, getting back into that uh, later on in the course when we learn about these different organ systems in more detail.